Right, here at Lovely Broadway with Cyrog Studios. On my left here is Richard Williams. Hiya. Colin Staples. Going? And Jeff. Hiya. And um, yeah, we've all come out now just to have a look a bit at Richard's artwork to start us off. That's all right? Yep, that's no problem. Hiya, I'm Richard from Cyrog Studios. Yep. I'm the uh, graphic designer, aka Studios. illustrator. And um, basically what we've got here is uh, just a few early concepts of uh, Max Manic. And uh, basically these are some of the first ever drawings that I sketched up. And uh, this is the Baboon. Uh, the enemies in the game. The first uh, concept. Is that Max's earliest incarnation? Then? These were just different uh, styles that we went for. Oh, yeah. We yeah. Trying to get into the, the, the rhythm, the idea of how he needed to look, basically. And, uh, you know, I went for several different uh, styles of cartoon, basically. I think that's what we chose them into the, the next. So yeah, this, this, this was the, the, you know, the, the first the concept. Model, yeah, the yeah. basic model of, uh, of Max. Then, then we tried to redesign it. With different different styles of uh, what we put on him. Obviously, he was always going to have a backpack. So obviously, you know, because of his uh, digital printer, that produces the limited edition of bananas, which is your defence mechanism in that game sort of thing. So yeah, that's 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 a little bit about the design concept of the early stages of uh, Max Manic. Max Manic, right? Um, that's good. Um... Where can we play Max Manic? You can download Max Manic on um, on the Play Store. It's only on for, on Android for now. We might might bring uh, Max Manic out on iPhone and other platforms in the future. Spending our well Max stores. I mean, it's doing fairly well for now. But say, it is a it is a, a would be odd stroll on platform game. So. And Colin, what's your job in all this? I um, I'm the producer. I'm the, the I'm going to put a sound together basically, just come to these guys and ask if they wanted to make a game and whatnot and then add them for the animating and stuff like that, the concept and yeah, just put the team together and just come up with a few ideas what I wanted to do, what, what game we want to do because we wanted, for our first game we wanted something really simple we didn't want to go over the top and, and, and get crushed, you know what I mean, by doing too much so but that's why the game is as basic as it is but as I will progress, we'll, we'll most probably make games with more, more content and a lot more, more meat in it, you know what I mean, so... I understand that. Yeah. Jeff, what's your role with Dan? I'm the programmer for the team. I basically did all the coding, sort of that, the Google account stuff to publish it. Um, one thing you've missed there, Colin, is you did the sound as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. Well, I'll you, do, you did the research yeah, and the sound, you research, found them all. Yeah. <laughs> It's a tedious job, but somebody's got to do it. Yeah. How did you find the sounds, Colin? Um, just royalty free sounds. Royalty free? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, obviously ripped not, from online. Yeah, I mean, it's a week, week to go. Yeah. We're, we're new to this, I mean, this is our first ever game. Not, none of us are experienced or any true background of making a game, so... We were all working full time and whatnot, so we're doing this in our spare time, and uh, we just want people to enjoy our games, basically. And, Hopefully, this is a, Max Manic is the start of, start of it. So, yeah. Cool, cool. Jeff, anything that Colin might have missed out, or Richard that might have missed anything out so far that you can think of about Max and the old game or anything like that? Only that everybody can play it. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> I understand that. Uh, how long has this game taken to put together? Yeah, I'd, I'd say early days because we was all learning really. Yeah. We, we're still learning in you know in our strengths and uh, what what our, our forward could actually take it. I mean the game is full <laughs> D, um, full vector as well, HD graphics. So there's a lot of work gone into the graphics side of it. On, on yeah, my, we, my we, behalf, um, we didn't go down the pixel route because we thought no, everyone gets pixel. I mean, we're, we're, you know, we're in a roundabout way, not to offend anybody, but. Um, we wanted to do something slightly a bit different, you know, we, we wanted it to look nice for a very, you know, simple gameplay, basically. Yeah. Mm. You know, just to show that we, you know, what we're capable of, really. So, yeah. so yeah. Uh, that was the, the main aspect of our, you know, our 
you know, our uh, goals. There's, there's details in the game that people don't even really see, like the backgrounds there. Are yeah, three layers there. Three layers of background and a massive amount of different tiles that get sort of randomised. Mm -hmm. Carefully made sure we don't put the same tile next to each self and remembers which ones you've walked past so you don't walk back and see a different tree. Yeah, lots there's, of, there's a lot of work. That lots of stuff like that and nobody even okay. notices it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's cycling? It's just one of the things that like, the people don't and look at a game that don't look into the depth of, of what because what Max is at the end of the day is a toy and then um, he, he produces these um, bananas out of this backpack called Tic Tac and then he's like an organic 3D printer so that's why I took in the supply of, um, <coughs> of bananas and then these bab baboons obviously are toys because of clockwork the uh, key at the back of them and stuff like that and they come from left and right and basically you just want to try and defend yourself with, with ease I mean it's an endless game I mean it's hard I mean when, when you get going, it, it, it can be quite challenging because you start off on easy, a bit slow, but then you, you go on and it gets to extreme where they're just constantly coming. You just got Yeah, the baboons are the enemies in the games, just aren't they? Try and take them out. I mean, there's achievements in there, scoreboards, all sorts. Even if you get to extreme mode and you do extreme, you, you get to unlock hard mode. So if you get good at the game, guys, just, just try and unlock hard mode and beat my score because at least I'm not on top of this. So, if, if, you, if you want to challenge it, I mean, just by all means, log on to Google Play and um, beat my score. Put it on there. What's been the reaction to uh, the game so far? Then, has it been a positive one? I mean, what's what's been happening? I think being new, we've had uh, a problem with getting exposure and getting out there. But yeah. generally, people who have played it, it's been very positive. They like the weight locks. I mean, all down to Richard. I mean, Richard's an awesome yeah. dog weight locks. <clears throat> I do my best. It looks really pretty, so that's a good thing going for us. And yeah, I mean, it's, it gets there, yeah. So I mean, people love it, don't they? I mean, and it's, this, a, it's this a very challenging. Hard. It's a very challenging but, but, game. It's for, for really, a simple game like that, it needs to, yeah, needs to be hard. It just needs to, to be for the hardcore indie fan, yeah, definitely. That's it. Yeah. I mean, when you, you die, it, it's one of them games where it's like, ah, oh, you know what I mean? But then you want to go, go at it again. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, got oh, a quirky, quirky sort of uh, addiction to it. Yeah. Um, it's the best way to describe it. Mm. When it comes to being odd, that's mainly down to Colin. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll have, I can't say it's too easy. constant arguments can we make this easier and Colin, no, we need to make that harder. <laughs> I, I'm a bit of a game player myself, I like a bit of a challenge when it comes to games. I've seen you all game players, yeah? Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Only really a casual gamer, I'm not sort of I mean, I like, personally, I like the retro games and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm more of an indie guy, I mean, yeah, I, I like to see... Collins so department, so yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely AAA, I must admit, I, I hold my hands up. But I've started off in indie games, you know, back in the old days of the SNES and, you know, the Spectrum 48K. So there's a lot of games on there from the really yeah. earlier childhood days um, that have really given me some inspiration That's and spot. Because indie games, are, they're more challenging, you know, you get these AAA, it's like, I think you just, you get, you, you led by an end. But when, when you see these indie games with these, all the developers trying to make games and stuff like that. There's a real odd element to it, or there's this something where you achieve, achieve something. I, I just feel like these in developers are just really trying to push games at it in a different style rather than a repeat of the same game over and over again. And hopefully we, we can we, we, we'll do that as well. You know what I mean? Make some other games because we're in the mm. process now of making a second game. I mean, yes. It's, it's only days. I mean, well, yeah, we, we're going to carry on and pop out as many games as we want, and hopefully um, everyone enjoy it. Right then, uh, just to the final question now. Um, what games in particular have inspired you all individually? I'll get to you all at once. Richard first. Um, Mario. Mario. Mario from, 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 yeah, franchise is still going today. Um, although Nintendo, you know, they, they've done some awesome games in the past. Most of my childhood, uh, childhood I've grew up with Mario and uh, Donkey Kong, you know, yeah, just awesome retro games and then going right up to AAA games, I'd say, yeah, and right up to Skyrim, uh, Fallout 3, uh, Resident Evil, they're my favourite games of all time. Because uh, a little bird told me that you like your zombies. I'm very horror, yeah, and in the future, hopefully, I will come out with the ultimate horror game. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Richard. Now, moving on to Colin, what inspired you? I've always been into gaming and whatnot, I mean, since I was a kid, I mean, I love Dizzy, I don't know if anyone's heard of Dizzy and stuff like that, and Leg, I mean, I love that like, type of adventure game where you've got people objects and stuff, sort of but I've played thousands of games, AAA games and stuff like that, but the one that, I think everyone knows it now, is, is it Binding of Isaac, 
that, that, that's um, a good inspiration, not that game and the stuff like that. And, yeah, and, 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 yeah, I mean, yeah, he's a legend. He, yeah, he's, he's inspired me with some of his games and his, his laid back approach to, towards things. And he, just, just, just awesome. Yeah. And Jeff, finally, I'm just speaking up a bit now, sorry. Right, I tend to, um, uh, unfortunately, I look at games from a programmer's point of view, I guess. Um, yeah. John Carmack, I guess, is a hero of mine, so Doom is probably the mm. ultimate I've got to me. agree with that one. But it's <laughs> Definitely Doom, yes. Not only was it fun, technically it's brilliant when you see how it was created. That's cool. Like a just going back onto the horror games, uh, my favourite game was like Ghouls and Ghosts and stuff like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. and like Spider House and all yeah, the horror yeah, games. Yeah, so that was, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, stuff like that. They were my favourite ones personally. But uh, I think you've all been great, gentlemen. Yeah. So I wish you luck on Max yeah. Manic. Yeah. And, and yeah, anything to add? You want to get Manic? Get Max Manic. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.